All right, I'm back with some more drama and seems like I'm covering it almost every other day at this point. Not that I want to, but it's important to talk about these types of things as Linus has officially doubled down on his stance when it comes to Rust and C in the Linux kernel. And this time we have a maintainer stepping down from the C side of things. Kristoff, where this ultimately all stemmed from. We're gonna get into both of these things. Let's get right into it. First, we're gonna start with Linus doubling down. In response to Laurent here and some of the back and forth that they've been copying in, I can't answer for Linus, sorry, but a generic, hey, this broke our working tool chain builds is something that is much, much, much different than an API change. So now that I have to turn off this driver in my build issue, I haven't found a clear statement from Linus on this topic. And those three statements can all be true together. We can at best have two. I would like to understand which one will drop first. And I believe many other developers and maintainers are wondering the same thing. So here's where we get another strong response from Linus himself. This is literally why Linux Next exists. It's where breakage is supposed to be found. And guys, you have to realize that there is no such thing as works every time. Just this merge window, we had a case where I didn't pull some stuff because it broke bind gen. And the reason was simply that and not a lot of people seem to be running the Rust builds on Linux Next. But realistically, my normal build testing has had Rust enabled for the last year or so. And that was literally the first time something like this happened. So be realistic. Can Rust cause toolchain problems? Sure. But we have that issue and we've had it much more with the regular Seaside 2. We have those kinds of issues pretty much every single release. And it's usually this doesn't build on some esoteric architecture that people don't test anymore. For example, this merge window, I did have that unusual, this doesn't work for my Rust build situation, but that was caught and fixed before the merge window even closed. Guess what wasn't caught and then wasn't fixed until RC3, a bog standard build error on the esoteric platform called i386. Yes, Linux Next is supposed to cache the interactions between different development trees. And yes, various build bots test different configurations, but nothing is ever perfect and you really shouldn't expect it to be. Basically, the above explained how Linux Next really exists as the integration branch and breakages. And this is where breakages are expected to be discovered before a final merge into the mainline kernel. Whether or not you're using components like Rust or C, these issues can still occur. And why it's important to understand is that the process is vital for Linux kernel developers and users alike because it underscores that breakages are really a normal part of development. Regardless of what code you're using, you need diverse test environments in order to make sure that the overall reliability and performance across various systems actually works. So Linus is just highlighting this and how it works in the kernel, trying to answer Lawrence's question. At the same time, people are harping on some Rust issues seem to do so not because Rust is any worse, but because they have internalized our normal issues so much that they don't even think about them. Every single release, Gwenter Rockel sends out his test results for RC1, and every single release we have a new failed test, and most of the time we have several build errors too. Guys and gals, this is normal. You should expect a breakage happens all the time, and that has nothing to do with Rust. It has to do with the fact that we are doing software development. Ask yourself, how many problems has Rust caused you in the last year? I'm claiming that the main problem has been people who had been forthing at the mouth, not the actual Rust support. So next time you want to write an email to complain about Rust support, take a look in the mirror. Is the problem actually the Rust code causing you issue or is it the problem between the keyboard and the chair and you just want to vent? Linus. This last one's quite the statement as they're talking about the interface between the keyboard and the chair, which is the operator, AKA you. An interesting way to put it, I, I think this statement's pretty funny. Anyways, mainly Linus is asking everyone to do some self introspection and ask themselves really, and ask themselves how much Rust has really affected their lives in the last year. And whether or not this is all just being blown out of proportion online in the email threads, well, it's a great question to have, and I'm gonna ask you the same question. Do you think this is all being blown out of proportion, or do you really think there's some merit to pull out Rust from the Linux kernel? Let me know in the comments section below, but while you're there, make sure to smash that like button for me to get more Linux and programming videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe below. YouTube can get finicky, and you wouldn't wanna miss another video like this. Let's continue on to some more statements from Linus, as well as Kristoff, one of the main maintainers who has now officially stepped down for maintaining the DMA mapping subsystem of the kernel. And to remind ourselves, Kristoff was really the one who 
start of this latest drama where two Linux Rust maintainers have now officially stepped down from and the statement that they would not be putting Rust code into their portion of the subsystem, specifically that DMA mapping portion where some Rust code and Rust maintainers were trying to integrate on top of the API that already existed there. And Kristoff was having none of that. They didn't want anything to do with it. And the main argument there was not the fact that Rust was being added to the kernel, but they didn't want to manage multiple code bases. And now through the weeks, we've seen replies back an official statement by Linus where Kristoff has absolutely no power to dictate whether or not there's another code base on top of the subsystem. It's up to the Rust maintainers to of course maintain that code, but they can feel free to submit that code and Linus will be the arbiter of whether or not it gets in. Anyways, one of the latest mentions from Kristoff here in response to James, this has come up a few times and we indeed would like to have some annotations in C headers so that we can generate more and to keep information local. For instance, it would be nice to have bind gens opaque near the C items or being able to mark functions as safe or to have other enums related annotations or even custom attributes as well as formatted formally enough docs so that can be rendered properly on the Rust side, or even references or lifetimes with an eventual safe C-like approach and so on and so forth. However, even if we automate more and even reach a point where C APIs are e.g. safe, which would be great, I wouldn't say C API safety would be the main goal, although it might be nice add-on feature. And then we have Kristoff saying, why not? Why is safety suddenly less a goal when you don't use the right synthetic sugar? The back and forth here was a little before and all I could really find in the mailing list, as I assume there was conversations in the background between Kristoff and Linus, which ultimately led to this commit and merge of the DMA dash mapping update to the maintainers list. Merrick has graciously offered to maintain the DMA mapping tree signed off by Kristoff Helwig, signed off by Linus Torvalds. What this officially does is remove Christoph Helwig as they've stepped down from the DMA mapping helpers list in an interesting twist of events as I did not see this coming. This is the third person who has seemingly stepped away from at least maintaining their specific branch of code as all this drama has been unfolding. And now Christoph Helwig has resigned as the DMA mapping helper maintainer because presumably because he disagreed with the introduction of Rust bindings for these helpers. To give him credit, he is doubling down and in his standing his ground when it comes to their beliefs on multi-code bases. It's understandable why they want to step down and reflects how these broader debates are happening within the Linux kernel community about whether or not to integrate new languages. Some really do not believe that this should be the case. And I think Kristoff is one of those people. Sad to see them go, but they are still around maintaining different parts of the kernel, including subsystems such as the NVMe drivers, and the free VX file system areas of the kernel. So they haven't completely stepped down by any stretch of the imagination, just away from the DMA for the time being. And a final mention by Linus on this whole topic, does Linux accept pull requests from the maintainer? This is what I think Laurent is deriving at. A fake Linus accepting a pull request at least requires it passes your build tests and boots your test machines. Kind of going back on what Linus was mentioning, how tests are broken even when submission occurs with C code, including what we talked about previously from the last response, I don't think I can give any black and white answers. I refuse to pull relatively seldom, but there are no hard and fast rules for when it happens. The most common situation is that something doesn't build for me, and that's because my build testing is actually fairly limited. My build testing is trying to be a wide ranging in the sense that yes, I do have all mod config build on an x86-64, which is likely to be the config that compiles the most code. And I do more limited, but real local config build to fairly regularly. But at the same time, my build testing is very limited in the configuration sense. So if something fails to build for me, I think it's a pretty big failure. Now, 99% of the time, the failure is on the pull requester side. Almost always, it's just that the stuff I was asked to pull was never in Linux Next to begin with, or it was in Linux Next, problems were reported, and the maintainer in question then ignored the problems for some reason. And we've seen this quite a bit, even with things like bcachefs not being properly tested, and we've had that drama unfold with the maintainer not regularly testing their own code, and then trying to submit it. Of course, Linus getting very mad at that, and not only commenting, but even threatening to remove it 
completely from the mainline kernel. Very rarely does it turn out that it was all in Linux Next, but I happen to hit something nobody else did. Yes, it happened with the Rust bind gen thing once, not enough to make it very much of a pattern. Sometimes I find problems not in the build, but in the running of the code. That actually happens distressingly often considering that my test cases tend to be fairly limited. So when I hit a this doesn't work for me, it clearly got a very little real life testing. Usually it's something that no amount of automated testing bots would ever find because it's hardware related and test farms don't have or don't test for that side. Typically it's a GPU or wireless networking, occasionally Bluetooth that fails for me, but that tends to be after I've done the pull and often pushed out so it's been too late. Honestly, the most common reason for refusing pulls is just that there's something in there that I fundamentally don't like. The details will differ wildly, signed off Linus. And I think this statement is important because it, it gives us an honest look into how Linus Torvalds approaches his decision-making process. Especially when it comes to a massive project like Linux kernel, seemingly there's no one-size-fits-all rule. Linus emphasizes that there isn't a strict set of criteria when accepting pull requests, including whether or not it is Rust, and harps on the fact that there's limited testing going on, and that the tests aren't exhaustive and cause clear issues where he commonly has to reject pull requests because of problems surfacing during his own real world use cases. He mentions that a lot of it comes from the GPU or wireless networking issues that bots, which are supposed to do automated testing, miss and really wants people to understand that maintainers and people really need to ensure that their changes are tested thoroughly before submission. That seems to be the crux of major issues in the kernel and seemingly him wanting to get away from this whole Rust versus C drama. And now to get into the overall community sentiment on Rust and on Helwig's decision. Overall, there is blame being put on Rust for mixing the code base here in the kernel and causing this drama Although people believe that it can show promising innovation in the kernel development on the long run, it's just growing pains integrating it with the current C code base. There's also argument that the reaction from Helwig was a little bit dramatic as the departure ended up being self-inflicted. Whether or not it was, we'll maybe figure out if there's a statement released from Helwig. But at the moment, they seemingly just don't want to do anything with the DMA anymore, and that's their choice. Perfectly okay with that one. Concerns... There are definitely concerns about leadership and the process that takes place here as this back and forth, including the resignations are going to be precedent for future issues, potentially affecting the stability of the kernel itself, because it underscores the frustration with maintainers who are entrenched in talking about their personal views rather than trying to work out code and spending a lot of time as to quote a Rust for Linux maintainer who stepped down months ago, too much non-technical nonsense. And a lot of people stress that the issues attributed to this whole Rust drama is not unique, as it is a broader part of software development and how to navigate it with multiple code bases. As the community wrestles with this change, there's definitely enthusiasm about modernizing the kernel, but there are also significant resistance from those who favor the stability of the established practices going on. Well, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below after this latest round on this Rust versus C Linux divide. Take a moment to subscribe below. You've made it this far, you're a true fan, and you wouldn't want to miss another video. Also, smash that like button for me to get this out to more people. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.